What brings you the most joy these days? And that's what I... But I don't... I know what joy is, but I haven't, I haven't felt it. And like, I don't feel happy. Ever. And that is, that is really hard to live with is never having anything to look forward to. You wake up exhausted and then when you're awake you're like I can't wait for nighttime to come and then you can't wait for daytime to come. You just want to pass the time and just get it over with. It, there's a lot of people who live like that and who do it in silence and I understand and it's really hard to remind your brain what happiness is when you haven't felt it in years. I just don't remember what it's like. I mean, I have abstract memories of happy events where I know I was happy, but that the actual feeling, I haven't felt that in a really long time. I used to love life, absolutely loved it. Every day was a, a joy and I had no idea that the kind of darkness that I live with now even existed, uh, but I, I spent too long ignoring my mental health and everything kind of caught up to me and so now I'm in a crossroads trying, I guess trying to find myself trying to find a direction again because I don't know I don't know what's happening and that, that could be the scariest thing sometimes it's I, I, I lie awake when you're in bed you're sitting or sweating and you're thinking is every day going to be like this every single day going to be just like this and it's really hard to get out of those dark spots but that's what I'm trying to learn to do this year is not allow myself to fall down those really deep holes. So I'm sitting in a park in the middle of Texas after traveling 900 miles. I thought this video was going to be more like a typical SBSK interview where we're in somebody's living room, we're hearing their thoughts, their goals, their dreams, their fears, everything about them, getting to know them together, but that's not going to be the case. And I want to explain to you, with 100% transparency, why that is. God, it's hard to describe. I... I miss not being aware of the time. I miss just forgetting that time has passed. Instead of being aware of every second, of every minute, of every hour that just drags. And I, 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 I miss being carefree um, just hanging out and doing things with people and that is probably one of my greatest fears is that I'll never get that back and no matter how hard I try it'll remain elusive to the end of my days and that makes it very difficult to get up the next morning when those are the kind of thoughts you're having Sorry, my brain gets scrambled. Many of you remember our friend Daniel, who I interviewed last year. I can have what, what you would call voices in your head. Um, it's not my voice, but it's not some personality. It's just a different voice, but it's in my head. After that video was published, Daniel and I kept in touch. We would email each other several times a month and also, Daniel has a YouTube channel. He often makes videos about what he's experiencing, sometimes the tougher part of living with schizoaffective disorder. Hello again, video diary and people. <laughs> um, so I apologize for my absence. 
I was committed to a mental hospital for 10 days and the emergency room for three days waiting for an opening. I had a bit of a very rough two weeks. After that video where he talked about being forced to commit to a psychiatric stay, I emailed him and said, hey, I'm thinking about you, what's going on? And typically when I would email him, it would just be pleasantries back and forth, miss ya, what's going on, what's new with you? But this time it was a different reply, and I'm not going to try to sum it up for you, I'm just going to read it to you. Is it okay if I ask you questions about that email you initially sent me? Yes. Absolutely. I'm not even sure what, what was in it, but I'll answer the questions honestly. It was the email where you said that it felt like the world was closing in around you, things were getting tough. The first thing I want to ask you, and we discussed this before, you said it was okay for me to share that email? Absolutely. Why is it okay? Because it's really difficult to try and describe to people just what that feels like and if it always feels like it's hidden. Whether you're hiding it from your family members or your best friends, everyone feels like they're suffering in silence and everyone feels like they're suffering alone. And the sad truth of the matter is we don't have to be. And I, I do it to myself as well. I do it a lot. I'm always on my own. I don't have to be, but it's a decision that I think for some reason I can't share that stuff with people. And so sh sharing that part of the email or anything I, I've written personal to you is basically the, the same idea that we shouldn't have to hide that kind of stuff. It should be okay to be open about it. Dear Mr. Chris, First off, I wanted to thank you again for everything you've done and are doing for so many people. It is a beautiful, important work. It is so hot out here, Mr. Chris. Why do you like to call me Mr. Chris? I don't know. That's just the name that kind of stuck with me. I could call you, just call you Chris, but even in high school, I think I used ma'am on the girls in my um, class, same age, and yes sir to people my same age, it's just the way I was raised. I'm writing this letter to you because I wanted to be certain that you knew just how much I have appreciated your amazing kindness and compassion. You showed me that I had worth and that I was deserving of love and friendship just like anybody else. It was a very powerful moment that left a huge impact and I will always be grateful to you for that. Like I was fine this morning getting ready to meet you and then when you said you were here it's like my heart's been on my throat. It's just because the last interview did impact me uh, very heavily in my life in, a, in a, some really positive ways but it's changed it for sure so I think that's like in the back of my mind I don't know what will come from this. So thank you. A million times thank you. Recently, I found myself caught and trapped in a vicious and horrible cycle of overwhelming fear and uncertainty. Every day finds a way to be worse, and even when it seems impossible to get harder, it undeniably does. I feel trapped, holding on to the tightrope with nowhere to go but down, and I am scared of what will happen next. And I wanted you to know just how much you and your community have helped. And that it was a tremendous honor to meet you and everyone you've inspired. God, I still can't seem to do it. Even when it shouldn't matter, I can't seem to open up all the way. Just remember, please, that I'm trying, I really am. But since waking up in that hospital and every day since has been a steady descent in different levels of hell. And I want to get better, that's what my last poem was about, but I have some innate inability to willingly give up my freedom, even if it means saving my life. I can't do it, I could for a while, but now it's physically impossible. The thought of death or freedom, I seem to choose death. Good Lord, I am all over the place. They want me to quit. They whisper it all day, every day. 
I guess I'm sorry. I'm sure that it is a huge annoyance. I guess I wanted to just be honest to someone other than myself. I can scream clues and hints to the heavens for eternity, but I shouldn't expect others to be able to read my mind. Please don't think less of me, Mr. Please don't think less of me. Thank you, Mr. Chris. Do you remember what you were thinking when you sent that email? It was a bad night. <laughs> um, I wrote it actually when I was here at the park. Uh, that side of the park, where the my little secret meadow is. I was lost that evening. It was, I'd probably sat in the car for, like I said, a good six hours or so. And I just wanted someone to know that sort of what was going on in my head and I thought of you and I wrote you. After reading that email, I wrote back to Daniel right away. I told him I want to come and see him and help him formulate a game plan to tackle his mental health, to see if we can get him in a better place. We originally planned to meet at his home yesterday at noon, but noon turned to 1.30, 1.30 turned to 4 p.m., 4 p.m. turned to 8 p.m., 8 p.m. turned to 10 a.m today. 10 a.m. today turned to 10.30, and then Daniel asked if instead of meeting at his home, we could meet at this park. Is it sometimes hard to follow through with commitments? Definitely. Definitely. That's, it's, you, you'll, you'll latch onto any little problem, but try and protect yourself, I guess. Isolate yourself. Even when you don't, again, you don't have to. But it's, sometimes it's an overwhelming urge. And it takes a lot of fight to get back into it and still do what you said you are going to do. If somebody who cares about you, like me, wants to support you when you are in one of those dark holes, what can they do? Um, especially if I write, write to you, reach out to you. If you can, resp respond and just let me know that you got my message and maybe be a little more aggressive in not allowing me to isolate myself uh, I, and it's not just me a lot of us do that when we get in those positions where everything feels so much more difficult than it should be again we suffer alone in silence and we don't have to so you riding back then you know makes a huge difference and you coming all the way down here to see me it makes a huge difference. I'm sorry about meeting outside. No, it's fine. We found this nice little shady dugout right by a baseball field. Yes, and there's a little breeze coming through. It feels quite nice. I'm glad I get to experience this day with you. Thank you. And I think Same that's here. a good way to start our conversation is to thank you for reaching out to me. I feel nothing but grateful that you sent me that email. Really, thank you. Because uh, you drove across few states to get here <laughs> so that means a lot it does I, I used to do a lot of driving and so I'm I, I know that drive it can be it can be long so it means it means a lot to me mr. Chris thank you you're worth it I'm not sure about that why aren't you sure of your worth I just don't feel worthy I I feel like I'm wasting people's time by being alive. Um, like I'm eating food that someone else could eat or I'm taking up someone else's space, like that someone else is supposed to be here. I know that sounds ridiculous, but that's what it feels like a lot of the time. <laughs> Sorry. I laugh at in, like in inappropriate times. That is just something I do. I am sorry. What are you thinking when you laugh? That I can't believe I just said that. Like that's what I was thinking. I was like, wow, you just slapped them over the head with some really dark stuff there, Daniel. Congratulations. <laughs> you just sucked the joy from Mr. Chris. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to say this, but I'll just say it bluntly. Nobody has the ability to take my joy. Okay, good. That actually does make me feel better because I, I don't like hiding 
those parts of myself. They are just part of me. You know, I have I have a lot of life left in me, but there's there's a lot of darkness there too. And to deny one is to lie to yourself. So I don't I don't like having to hide that. So thank you for not making me try and hide that. No, you never have to hide any part of you. Of course, there's moments like when I filmed the intro before we came out here. I got choked up discussing the email just because I don't want you to have a negative experience on this world, but that's not something that is permanent in me. I feel my joy right again afterwards, and I'd rather have a friendship with you where you can express anything to me and know that it's not going to negatively impact me. That's a huge deal that I can be completely honest about answering your questions. Because you don't get that a lot. People will say, you know, they they want to hear the honest answer, but they get really frustrated really quickly when you don't turn things around very quickly. And that's one reason why I very much enjoy speaking with you, because I can just be as blunt as possible. And you're not going to judge me for it. In fact, you'll probably understand. Do you feel like you're hiding yourself for most people? Yes. Yes. Uh, even though I know I, I'm failing at it, like keeping everything in, I'm constantly putting forth a lot of energy at hiding the worst parts of me and not being honest about it because I don't, I don't want to worry everybody all the time. You know, they'll come out and ask me if I'm doing okay, and inside I have a hurricane going on. But on the outside, I'll say I'm fine. It's because I don't, I don't think they want to hear that while they're talking to me, the ground is on fire. I, I don't think they want, want me to try and explain what that's like. I sometimes just don't know how to move forward. And I... You, you feel like you're stuck in this never-ending nightmare that... follows you day in and day out. And that night when I wrote you that email, well, we had a lot of confusing feelings that night, but I did feel, I shamefully, like a, a, a release that evening where I was like, well, maybe it's just better this way. And people say they're, they, they, that they, that they care, but it's really hard for people to get their love through to you because you've blocked yourself off so much because everything hurts all the time. And so even though people will say that they love me, it rarely gets through. And so that, that night I it, it just, I couldn't, I couldn't reconcile that it's, people actually care about me it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't feel good when you look up eventually and you see that you've alienated yourself to where you're almost completely on your own and you have to try and rebuild friendships and relationships and it's all out of fear it's all out of a fear that you're not good enough for them and they don't want to be friends with you anyways, so why waste their time? Well, I hope you know the act of me coming here is an act of love. Yes. And that's just a way for me to show you your importance to not only me, but our entire community. And since you are being 100% transparent about everything you're experiencing, I think it's only fair if I return that. So can I share with you a concern I have? Yes, you may. One of the things that I greatly reflected on before not coming here, I didn't reflect on that at all, but before bringing my camera, is if I should. I don't want to exploit you in your time of pain, in your suffering. So I had these contradictory thoughts of, this is something that should be done in private, but then I also know this is the type of advocacy we need in the world, and so often mental health disorders are hidden away. Yes. So I have these alternating forces of just do it in private. Nobody needs to know. And what are you talking about? The world needs to see the stuff like this happens. 
and I don't have a solution. These are, I just want you to know that these are thoughts in my mind and I would love to hear what you think when you hear that. I don't think there's a right answer. I think you do the best you can and I think we, we're both making the choice that if it helps, it's worth it and it should be done. I mean, they, they brought me back to life and I spent you know, something like 10 days in a, one of the uh, mental hospitals. There's just no funding there. There's, it's just TV on all day and maybe one or two group sessions. But other than that, you just, there's nothing. There's no, and no one knows you're there. You're just kind of buried in the darkness. Is this when you were forcefully committed? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Why were you forcefully committed? What happened? I was having a um, kind of a break that evening and I was hearing a lot of commanding voices and was uh, seeing some of my reoccurring horrors. And so I decided that I was just gonna leap from the bridge. And I got up there and I had a note that I threw to the police officer and I let go just as one of the police officers I didn't see it snuck around to the other side, grabbed me as I was falling over. And uh, then it was um, body slam time where they slammed me on the ground and handcuffed me. And, um, another ambulance ride and three days in the emergency room where you just and that's it there's got to be better ways of dealing with us when we're having these issues because I I was the, the whole reason I, I didn't call for help because I was afraid of exactly what would happen and what happened was days of sitting in a bare room no stimulation and someone watching you 24-7 Three days of that, and you're not allowed anything. If you don't mind me asking, did you accrue a lot of medical debt through being forcefully committed? Um, I'm still getting those bills. Um, I also got airlifted from a separate time. Um, I get that bill, and then the bills from the um, physical illness. So it's all just stacked up, and. I love people who don't quite understand the VA. I like what the VA should pay for it. Like that's the way it's supposed to work. But the VA, they sent me a letter saying that they wouldn't pay for the life flight because I did not give them enough warning. I was like, I was almost dead and they were saving my life. What kind of warning am I supposed to give you? I know the US healthcare system will just say it's less than ideal and you've accrued quite a bit of medical debt this year. Yes. So any ad revenue that this video makes will be putting towards your GoFundMe for your medical debt. And also, if anybody's interested, I'll put your GoFundMe in the description below. And just to be clear, that's money that doesn't go through me and then to you, that's directly to you. Thank you so much. I'm, I am awful putting that out there myself. Awful with it. And that means a lot. You know that a lot of people care about you, so why do you have a hard time asking for help? It goes back to that whether I'm worthy of it or not. It goes back to that feeling of uh, surely there, there's someone else that could be using the help or surely there's someone else that you could support that's better or more well-spoken or has their stuff together it just you never feel good enough something we didn't discuss in depth last year is that you're a veteran and you live with ptsd yes can you explain what that's like night terrors um i also have sleep paralysis during those night terrors and it's a constant source of anxiety it's, it's difficult to explain. Uh, I kind of relate it to restless leg syndrome, where your body is so coiled up on the inside to where you have to spastically just reach out and kick or flail your arm out because your whole insides have become condensed into a stressed ball that needs to be released. And that can happen just by being in public. Uh, people I don't know being getting too close to me. Is your PTSD directly connected to your service in the military? Yes, along with 
lots of head injuries. Like, I laugh about them now, but they were pretty serious. Um, I skipped on the outside of the plane at um, paratrooper school, jumping out like a rock skipping on a lake because my pull cord got caught. And luckily, the pull cord does it, pulls the chute all on its own, so I didn't have to do anything, but I was unconscious for the whole trip down. Um, another time, I hit the ground at a public jump. It was an air show, and I just wasn't prepared for it. And when I landed, I went feet and then head, and then the chute wrapped around my neck and reinflated on the ground. And so it dragged my unconscious body in front of hundreds of spectators while an ambulance tried to catch up to put the chute out. Um, and more. So my head's been through a lot. I want you to know that this question doesn't come from a place of judgment or I don't care at all that you delayed. I'm happy to be here and support you as you need. But I want other people to understand what you, why you delayed. Definitely don't take it as offensive. Um, it's more, it's, it's an emotional battle within the cells. So it has nothing to do with you. I, I, I bet it feels personal. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I'm flaky on with the phone because I'll start believing that the phone's listening in on me and it becomes very difficult to use the phone to communicate and I'll just, it'll become overwhelming and I won't trust it anymore and I'll put it down for like an hour when I was supposed to respond within like 10 minutes. And then I'll trust it enough to check it. Uh, it's it really just patience, patience. Um, that's all I could beg of people is have patience with me and have patience with others around you who are going through difficult times. Because that's, that's the best thing you can give them is patience and understanding. I just wanna really hit home the point that I have nothing but joy and gratitude that we're sitting here together today. And the reason I ask that question is that so that people who have humans with mental disorders in their life, I want them to understand that sometimes that person canceling plans or ghosting, don't take that offensive. I have lost a lot of friends, people, close people in my life because of my actions. and it can get to feel really alone. Just work with them, you know? Love them, care for them. Don't abandon them just because they made you angry or they let you down. So there is a screen there, I see it. There we are. <laughs> Why don't you look up? Why do you co constantly look down? Uh, it's just more comfortable. The camera's not so bad, but sometimes during my worst states, it'll feel like someone's trying to, this sounds in insane, um, that someone's trying to take my soul. By looking at you? Yeah. I know how silly that sounds, but it's a very strong feeling, and it, it's something that it just takes a while to get over. Would you be more comfortable if I didn't look at you if I looked at the ground or whatever? Oh no, it's fine as long as it's mainly like if I hold eye contact for too long then it, then it starts to get really uncomfortable and like something horrible is about to happen. Sorry, it's been a really rough year. Um, I'm trying to keep my head above water. That's, that's, that's mainly what this year has been, been about and sh sharing the experience of trying to keep your head above water. And I have messed up a lot, and I've learned a lot. I, I have, I've, I've had some good experiences where I've learned some stuff I didn't know before, but I've also suffered. And I don't know if it ends. Like I wanna, there's part of me that wants to say, you know, the positive message of, well, there's always hope. and. 50% of the time I believe that myself, but the other 50% of the time I don't. Because, you know, I'm gonna go back to being by myself for hours at a time, trying to figure out ways to engage my mind and not let the darkness take over. So I would say actually in the past year, a, a little darker view, a little darker view. But it hasn't been a worthless trip because uh, I've learned a lot from psychiatrists and trying to get meds right 
and it is an ongoing process. So going into this video, I knew that I didn't have the expertise to help Daniel to make everything better. It's not like I'm going to come, we're going to share a laugh, have some good vibes, and he'll be okay. So what I did was reach out to several programs in the area where he lives that serve veterans and serve veterans with mental health disorders. You mentioned that you don't feel like you're good enough, and that's something that you mentioned to me when I told you I was researching programs that help with the mental health of veterans. And you said that I would rather reserve those slots for people who have a physical injury and you don't feel worthy. Yes. First, I wanna say that I've reached out to those programs, people high up in each of those programs that are local to here, and they said that's absolutely not the case. I sent them your first video. They said that you would be a great candidate. They would love to work with you. You're worthy of it. Mental health disorders are very real and you're deserving to be part of those programs. But I also know that there's many veterans out there with mental health disorders from what they've experienced who feel the same way as you. Why don't you feel worthy? Yeah. Because you're not, you're, there's no visual scars for it, you know? Uh, you, it's not like you want visual scars, but you feel like, well, I got, a, I, I got my both hands, I got both feet, my, I'm, I can stand up, I can walk on my own. Surely I shouldn't have the problems that I have. And you feel incredibly weak and that you're just, you failed. You've failed in every way imaginable that you can't take care of yourself the way you're supposed to. And it's, it, it, it's very depressing. <laughs> and it makes you just, it makes you feel like that, why, 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 why do I deserve any of that help? because yeah man I have a real hard time feeling positive about myself I can tell you that one of the people I reached out to who's high up within one of these organizations that works with the veterans they told me that one of the first things they would do with you is help you see that you are deserving of getting help the mental health disorders are real and you're just as worthy of anyone else as re of receiving these services I have the intake forms on my computer. It'll be hard to fill them out at the park. Right. But what I would like to do, if you're cool with it, is I'll take your call. I am so sorry. You're fine. Trust. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hello. Hi, Daniel. Yes, ma'am. Who was that? What's going on? Um, I get services here where I live through MHMR for uh, psychiatric services and uh, therapist services and that was my psychiatrist doing a um, medication update check-in where she does she calls in and checks with my symptoms based on the medications I'm taking seeing if they're being effective at all and if not she'll throw in a new one like today she's throwing in a new medication and other than that she'll up the dosage and so that's what that phone call was about because it's I'm learning it's 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 a long process trying to find the right meds that, that are going to really help and make a difference. Do the meds help? Uh, it's like you don't know if they help until you don't have them. It's because it, it's very subtle changes. Like for me, not hearing voices for 48 hours is a big deal and it's been about 48 hours. So is the medicine working? I don't know. Maybe it is, hopefully it is, and maybe that'll start making a difference for me. I'm scared to find out if it's not the medicine, so I'm just gonna keep taking the medicine because I'm gonna assume it is medicine helping. Thank you for sharing that. So we were talking about the intake forms. Yes. And how it would be hard to fill them out here. What I would like to do is schedule a time with you where we could Zoom over the computer, and I think the forms, each one might take 10 minutes. Okay. I'd love for you to do it, and I could just, you know, talk to you, send you the links. I would absolutely be go for that. Just kind of be your cheerleader if you have any questions. I, I mean, you're more than capable, I think, of doing it all yourself. Let's do that. Let's zoom that and do some paperwork. I'm, I'm terrible at doing it for myself, so yes. We'll figure out that date sometime in the next week. We'll talk off camera. 
But before we do turn off the camera, is there anything else you'd like to say? Thank you for coming down and for answering my emails and responding to me when I write you. It... It means the world. And it, as anyone knows, it gets really exhausting doing this by yourself and feeling completely alone all the time. And that's not a way to live, man. It's not a way to live, so thank you. We each deserve to be alive. And we each deserve to have someone there for us when we doubt that. And so I would just plead with people not to give up. To fight and grasp and claw and mud their way to the top the best they can. I'm still doing it and I still feel like I'm at the bottom of a well half the time. But it's a disservice to ourselves to give up without a fight. Thank you. That breeze feels so good. <laughs>